And so now the only thing that I have that's like real money coming in is uh, for this next little while is this festival that I'm doing, but that's not going to pay me until March. So as soon as that law and order money comes in, that's what's going to keep me afloat until this festival pays me out. And then that's when it's going to keep me afloat. But I'm still trying to put money aside so that I can build on other projects that I want to invest in. For example, my own podcast which is going to cost a little bit of money to start off with, which, you know what I mean? So like you're constantly, like for me though, I think that the key thing is, is that I keep reinvesting in myself. Welcome to the Sevo show where we have guests from local spots, national spots and international spots. And I believe the very first Canadian on the show today, her name is Alia Kanani, rhymes with Punani. (laughs) probably heard that one a million times but here we go (laughs) and I'm going to do something different today I'm going to see if I can bring it close and find your line and see where you tick and see if I can get you sure and I don't know what will happen but I'll see how I go okay warning this episode and most of my podcasts is light-hearted slash dark humor and anything I say is a joke so if you think I'm saying something to offend anyone Yes, but in a funny way. Alia, you're from Toronto, Canada. Thank you for flying all the way here to be... To be on this podcast, Amazing. honestly. It's really... Make sure that you like plug into the Patreon. It, it spent, he spent a lot of money to Correct. bring me on as a when, guest. When I make one, I will definitely S- start use that as a today. clip. <laughs> use that as a clip. So I've, did the, I've done the research, but I've also seen a few clips where people ask you, where are you from? Mm. And when you say Canada... you they, they look like they're disappointed. And then they say, where are you from from? Hence the name of one of your uh, shows. Yeah. So where is the ethnic darker skin from? So. <laughs> Straight into it. Straight What's into all of it. this? Straight into it. I'm just, uh, I'm just spending a lot of time uh, in the unprotected ozone. No, um, my family, my origins, uh, the look is from India, as far as we know. Amazing. Um, about 150 years ago, I'm part of the diaspora. Cool. Um, See, that's why I asked this question. Mm-hmm. There's no racism. There's, There's no, no cultural insensitivity. I mean, I, a that little just... bit. A little bit. No, 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 no. No, no, I actually, you know, it's Fucking really. Fucking curry. I, you know what, bro? As long as you eat it with naan and not naan exactly. bread. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because naan means bread. So every time I hear people say naan bread, I'm like, you sound like an idiot. <laughs> Na- <laughs> it's like saying chai tea. It's like a thing, bro. It's a thing. It's Fair like enough. chai is tea. You guys are just saying tea, tea, bread, bread. Everybody sounds like they're like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so you're born there. But I was born in Canada. I was Great. born in Belleville, Ontario, which is a tiny little town uh, just outside of Toronto. Um, my family uh, so immigrated from India to Tanzania, East Africa, mm-hmm. um, wow. uh, the couple generations before me. There you go. Um, and so my cran- uh, like my grandparents, my parents, like you know, born and raised there. Um, and then my sisters and I were the first generation born in Canada. Um, and then we kind of did like a backwards thing where we moved to Tanzania when I was 14 years old because I think my dad was just like, mm, things are not working out. Let's see if we go back and see what happens. <laughs> what do you mean not work out? What happened? Oh, just like, I just, I mean, I think that he needed some support to, yeah. you know, kind of get through some, some things. Um, but we moved around a lot growing so up. So what did they do? What did they do for the, the moving around part? <coughs> what was their job? Oh, so my dad was just a, a businessman. It, cool. uh, honestly, sometimes when I describe it, I'm like, was he a drug dealer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, maybe for a little while. <laughs> was he running from the law? Potentially. <laughs> uh, but uh, we just, yeah, we just moved around a bunch. Um, when we moved to Tanzania, we actually moved in with my aunt who had a business, mm-hmm. which was a, like, she was a swimming instructor. And my dad uh, had run a few restaurants by then. So it was like a place called Splash Town. Okay. And uh, it was in our backyard. Uh, so there was the house we lived with, my aunt, my uncle, my sisters, and my dad. Um, and in the backyard, there was like a massive uh, swimming pool and like a kid's pool and a jacuzzi and then there was a restaurant in the back so my dad ran the restaurant my aunt ran the swimming classes and every Sunday morning I would wake up with like children screaming Papa look <laughs> as they like go down the water slide I'm like shut the fuck up <laughs> like, and that's yeah. why you don't have kids yeah, there you go see that Fair sums enough. it up <laughs> <laughs> so y- y- traveling around and having all these different experiences and your dad in hospitality and your mom in drowning children yeah you <laughs> have a lot of stories yeah and you being a comedian 
has that helped um, with the writing side of things? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like I think that that both. Um, I, I think that both, like, it's it's inspired a lot of, like, the experiences that I have because I, I've gained a lot of perspective yeah. just from, like, the experiences that life has given me, which I'm so grateful for. I've always said, I'm like, I feel so rich in the experiences of life because of all of the different stuff that we've done growing up and then I did since, you know what I mean? I've always been a bit of a nomad. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then after that, I became a flight attendant and I continued oh, wow. traveling, yeah, for, like, about a decade I was a flight attendant. Um, and so I did that. Which also allowed me to, you know, have a lot more experiences. Like one of the things I say in my show is like I've probably met more people than most people would in, you know, ten lifetimes just because of my circumstances. How good. You know, and like how cool is that? Like yeah. I I I I most of what I know, what I've learned, what I've experienced, it all comes from other people's experience in life. I just talk to everyone. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've like collected all these experiences mm. through people, which I feel like is, you know, and then also just because I've, I've, I've always been in positions and situations where I'm just like talking to people that I don't know, talking to strangers, having to deal with, you know, situations and navigate things, whether it was like, you know, on a work side where I have to like be able to like, you know, figure out how to like, make sure the vibe of the airplane is not chaotic because we just found out that one of the engines is not working. Has that happened? Yeah. Or... Okay, let's, yeah. let's dive into that or, one. Or, you know, right? But also, but or, or on the flip side where I'm like, in some place I don't know, uh, you know, in some city and country that I've never been to where I don't speak the language and I am lost and I need to find help. You know what I mean? And I, I like, so, like in all these different circumstances, I just, I learned how to interact and connect with people. And so I think that that, that really has fed it's a, a lot of It's a good survival skill, isn't it? Yeah. Honestly. So let's go back to the engine failure. <laughs> like, I didn't know you were a flight attendant. Yeah, bruh. And the best part about working there uh, for a decade and no longer working in there, you can give me some juice. Yeah. Can you give me some juice? Yes. Uh, sure. What juice would you like? All um, of it. All of it. I, do I they actually... lose your bags on purpose? No, no. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, I do some interviews outside, mm. like in the street, and I interviewed these two flight attendants uh, probably about six months ago. Okay. And they were pissed, which in Australia means drunk. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Pissed, I was thinking mad. Yeah, yeah. so some Australians go, uh, I'm, I had Dave, Dave Hughes on the show the other day. Um, we said uh, some Australians, or well, Australians slang is, let's go drink some piss. Right. Right? Right. And if you say that in Canada or America, they'll be like, the fuck? Why would I drink urine for? Yes. yes. But here it's alcohol. Anyway, they were pissed, meaning they were drunk. Yeah. And uh, they were having a good time. They wanted to be involved. They grabbed the mic and I, I said, what's, what's the pet hate when you're a flight attendant? And they're like, yeah, when someone shits and leaves the door open. And, uh, and then the other girl said, when someone goes through and we check the seats... We're not there to tell you where your seat is. We're just making sure you're not yeah, yeah, yeah. a dumbass and yeah, yeah. put on the wrong flight. I do a whole bit on that anyway, in my show. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that was good. Yeah. I posted it like a couple of days later. Yeah. It started going viral. Oh, really? And then I was at an event, a basketball event. Uh -huh. that <laughs> both of them came to the basketball Stop. event trying to find me. To tell me to take it down because I wasn't on my phone all day. I, I wasn't on Instagram looking in my DMs. And, yeah, I took it down. But <laughs> That's so funny. So I have this kind of unofficial rule sometimes. <laughs> Where if it's going to cost somebody their job, you'll be nice. <laughs> no, if you're drunk and I interview you, yeah, it's kind of like... Uh, it's not consent. Right, right, and I'm right, like, right, oh, right. Better. Yeah. And then I would be, and I was working in nightclubs, uh, interviewing people in nightclubs. Yeah. And literally every second video that I did, I was like, this is gold. Posted right. it, they would contact the club and they're like, yeah, I need to take it down. Oh, I, no. I was drunk. You didn't have my permission. And then, and then in the camera, I'm like, do I have your permission to uh, record this? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, I want to yeah, be yeah. on the thing. And then the next day they're like, yeah, no, I was drunk. I don't consent. I, <laughs> you know what? I feel like that's like a really good little hack that I can keep in my back pocket. Every time I do a podcast, I'm like, I might be drunk right now. <laughs> and then if I say something I didn't like, I'd be like, I was super pissed. I told you I was drunk yeah, at the Yeah, please take it down. Yeah. Yeah, please <laughs> like, take it down. So we could be wasting our time today. But um, going back to the flight attendant stuff, well, let's go, let's go through it. Um, okay. 
Well, tell me the tell me the engine failure story. I've always been curious about this. How do you alert the passengers, or does the captain? Because because I know that ping sound yeah. means hey attendants, pick up the phone. Yeah. When I need to talk to you. Mm-hmm. That's the thing because I figured that out. But um, the captain obviously tells you first. Yeah. And then and then it's your job to yeah, tell. Yeah, can you imagine? I'm like in the middle of serving coffee and then I just hear an announcement that the captain's saying like the end. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, we knew about that. Just be back. And no, I'm no, like, no. well, do you, you, know, almost, you, you, you would probably feel it or you could hear it kind of. Not necessarily. Okay. Like you can hear if you really are. But like when you're, you know, you would hear it more like. You know, through the flight, like you don't necessarily like hear the engines of or the airplane. Flames. It's like takeoff and landing. Yeah. That's that's really when they it, rev up. It was really more just a shut off. It wasn't like a flaming thing. No, it wasn't a flaming thing. Okay. Uh, thankfully, um, yeah. but I've had a bunch of stuff happen, dude. Like I, I so. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. This is what I want to hear. This is okay. So this is probably the most epic one because it was so early in my career. So when uh, the company that I used to work for, um, you could be an in charge flight attendant, which is like the head flight attendant, um, or you could be like the regular flight attendant um, because you were qualified for both. So it would mm-hmm. just depend on how your schedule. Was it Delta or out. Southwest? Uh, neither. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was Delta. I heard Delta is a really good company to yeah. work for, actually. Yeah. Uh, Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We'll get back I mean, to that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but so then I, uh, I'm, I'm on the, uh, the list as the in charge for this one. I've yeah. been working for the company for not even six months at this point. I'm still on probation. Okay. And so I'm brand spanking you, and it's my first time being the in charge, which is already kind of nerve wracking because you're the one that's now like making sure that, you know, all the security safety checks are done. You're communicating with the captain. You're doing like all this stuff, and it's yeah. like, not, you know, like rocket science, but you're still nervous already. Yeah. Kind of, you know, your first time getting yeah. a, a, in a training. position where you're like, yeah. Mm. Um, so now here we are. You know, uh, I'm, I'm doing this. Oh, and the flight attendant who walks in that I'm working with, she walks in in just the most, l- like, horrid mood, okay? We're now good friends. Like, I adore her. <laughs> but she walks in, slams her bag, starts swearing about how she wasn't supposed to be going here, mm. walks her back to the airplane. She's doing her checks but slamming fucking everything. And I'm like, oh, good, great. This is going to be a great flight, Right. So it turns out that she was actually supposed to go somewhere else, but because of the snowstorms that were happening, she got rerouted, and her husband and her kid were gonna meet her at the oh, hotel no. and like have like a play date at the swimming pool because it's only like an hour and a half drive from where they lived. Yeah. And now the whole thing is botched because they're there and she's getting sent somewhere else, uh. and it was like a whole thing. So I understand why she was in a pissed off mood. So anyways, I'm like, uh, any chance you want to be the in charge? And she was like, not a chance in hell. And I'm like, okay, great. I'll take it. I got this, right? So now the flights are delayed, blah, blah, blah. We get on the airplane. We take off. Um, and then as we're meant to land in the city that we were landing in, which was Winnipeg, there's a massive snowstorm. And they call it a whiteout where it's like there's so much snow you cannot see the runway. The runway yeah. Right. So we do what's called a missed approach because we're like going to approach onto the runway. But then as soon as it's like it gets white out and they realize that they can't safely make this landing, then they'll miss and then they'll come back. And then you know you got to wait for at least like 30 seconds to a minute before they're even going to contact you because they're busy doing their pilot things and making Mm. sure that everybody's safe. And then you get the call and they're like, hey, we just had a missed approach. This is the reason that we did it. Sometimes it could be for mechanical reasons. Sometimes it's weather reasons, whatever, right? So this is all part of the training that I remember. So I'm like, I sick. I'll just hang tight, wait. They call me. They're like, oh, yeah, we just had a missed approach. We're going to circle back around and then we're going to try again. I'm like, I cool, sick. So we do that. We miss again. Okay, a second time. Now, I'm making announcements to the passengers just to let them know that this is completely normal. These are just the weather conditions. And sometimes, you know, you can't land because it's, it's, it's unsafe to land. But we are not unsafe. What would be unsafe is trying to land when we can't in yeah, these yeah. conditions. So yeah. everything is totally fine. Yeah. It's just going to take us a few more minutes to get to our destination than planned. Now we go to do a third time. We miss again. And then the captain calls and he goes, okay, so here's the deal. We can't land in Winnipeg because these conditions are too foul. And if we try again, we're not going to have enough fuel fuel, for an alternate. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our alternate, which is Brandon, and we're going to go and land there. 
This is not a secured airport, so we are not allowed to get off the airplane. We are going to land there. They are going to refuel us, and we are going to leave. And I'm like, all right, cool. So then <laughs> we go to land in Brandon. We miss in Brandon <sighs> because of the weather. And I'm like, ah. Uh, then he calls me up, and I'm like, so what's happening right now? And he's like, uh, Aaliyah, he's like, we just missed because of the weather, but we're going to go at it again. I'm like, and what happens if that we have another issue again? What's like the backup? He's yeah, like, no, no, there's no backup. We have to land this time. We're out of fuel. Cool, 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 cool. Just so the passengers will be landing momentarily. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, everything's super fine. Everything's great. Just we're gonna just land. We're gonna land for sure this time. Fuck. Uh, no choice. You know what I mean? But I'm not telling them all of that because that's just gonna make panic. Yeah, I'm just yeah. letting them know that we're gonna land again. So then we landed Brandon and it was like a whole thing. It took them like 45 minutes to refuel us because they had this like little fuel truck for these like tiny little uh, airplanes that they had to like pump us with and it just took forever. And then we finally got to Winnipeg. What was supposed to be like a three, three and a half hour flight ended up being 12 hours with these people Jeez. on the airplane. But I also busted out all the business class wine and like fucking oh, yes. poured through the entire yes. airplane. I was like, come on, bitches. Like, we in here together. Let's go. If I could drink, I would drink. Drink on my behalf. <laughs> so, yeah, it was good. Far it was out. good. Yeah. I mean, for me, my, my flight experience is I just wish that I could get emergency exit for free. I know. Because 610. I uh, yeah I saw that as soon as I walked in I'm like this dude is well I would you know honestly when I would see people like you walk into my plane I would always 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 try and get you Bless. better seat Bless. because I've got really tall cousins yeah and they used to tell tell me all the time yeah. about how shit it was so I'd be like I you know like yeah let me but, take care of these but people. you know how you got like if you're you're a big person yeah and you need that second seat you have to pay for it yeah right. And I'm just like, why isn't there a thing that if you're an ab above a certain height, you just automatically get put into the, you get priority for emergency. Like, I didn't choose I, I, to I be understand. tall. Yeah. I was born to be tall. People yeah. choose to be bigger. Mm. That's going <laughs> to that's gonna come back. Um, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching that one. It's, <laughs> it's a choice. No but, no, but I feel you. I feel you, right? Like, I, I do get what you're saying. Mm. I, I always did think that, that they should do that. But I had a lot of, like, ideas for what the airline should be doing. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that. Well, I had an experience um, a month ago in Bali, right? Mm -hmm. And my wife and I were there on a work trip. And I already got bombarded with <laughs> work trip. Okay. I was literally there for a work trip. I was training some uh, restaurant and how to use TikTok. That's what I do. Oh, really? Yeah. And, um, yeah, we got on the... The, the, the night before, it said, hey, your flight's delayed. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, well, at least we knew that before we went to the airport. So it was delayed the whole day. So we went to get out of the uh, out to the airport by like 7 a.m. Yeah. We didn't get there until 5 p.m. And our takeoff time was meant to be like 7, 10 p.m. And I was like, cool. We got on the plane, started, got on the tarmac, and something's fucked with the uh, instruments on the uh, on the control panels mm -hmm. like something's not turning on like one of the TVs or whatever and I'm like yeah fair enough like safety precaution like I'd rather be safe than sorry yeah, yeah. you know I get it but we were there for like two hours and then we disembarked right I actually said deplaned in the video in my TikTok yeah it actually went viral it had like 2.5 million views oh, it was really? just a four and a half an hour to oh, yeah. get our luggage back yeah yeah so i was just like yeah anyway long story short we go back to the hotel and we were sweet the next day the next day was delayed again by like like an hour but still like jet star fuck off 
Oh, it was, yeah, yeah, it was Jetstar, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Anyway, I've let's heard move the on from the, uh, <laughs> we can talk about planes and shit all the time. Um, I got so many funny what's the stories. What's the one, th- okay, one thing about <clears throat> uh, passengers that you hated the most, like they, they did? Because there was a Reddit post that I saw and some of the answers from flight attendants were like, yeah, when I go, go past, don't like tap on the shoulder, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. What's your like biggest pet hate back in the day? My biggest pet I mean, you know, honestly, like I'm a very tolerant person, so okay. I wouldn't say hate, yeah. you know what I mean? Because I just like I also <laughs> understand like I've been on both sides of things. <clears throat> but I think that probably one of the most annoying things is when you're trying to tell somebody, talk to someone and they have their headsets on and you're like, <laughs> you're like talking to them and they're like, what? And you're like, your headsets. And they're like, what? You're like, your headsets. And they're like, what? You're like, your head. They're like, oh, what were you saying? You're like, of course you can't hear me with your headsets on and you're fucking blasting your music or your, your like movie. <laughs> Would you like some water? You know what I mean? And what do you think I'm here for with this trolley? Like, I'm trying to sell you life insurance, bro? Like, what am I doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, would you like to buy a house? Like, real estate? Like, what, what do you think we're doing here? <laughs> you know what I mean? With this trolley. But yeah. seats i'd be like yeah absolutely and then as they're moving their seat i'd be like that'll just be fifty dollars for the seat change and they're like oh, oh what i'm like yeah um, <laughs> unfortunately like the f pos machine isn't working so just cash only and then they start realizing that i'm joking i'm like and i can't really provide you with a receipt and if you don't tell anybody about this i'd appreciate it but yeah i'll just take a straight 50 Side hustle. yeah i mean i just I'd like yeah. just like slowly watch yeah. them kind of whatever um another one another one that i have i remember i was sitting in the uh kind of side row emergency where it's like the doors there and then the toilets are right there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh me and me and my wife were sitting there <laughs> and uh one of the toilets someone must have shit themselves or spewed everywhere or something because every time that every time someone would come in they would see oh Open, yeah, it's available, cool. They come in like unexpected, open it up halfway in and I could just see their face. I had the perfect front row seat to everyone's reaction. Oh my God. And I was like, this is the best in-flight entertainment I've ever That's had. so funny. And we were just like, yep, cool, next one, next one, next one. And then one of the flight attendants came in <laughs> and it was like, ooh. And then you know how you can like do the auto lock from the outside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They locked it and I was like, Come on, this man. This ruined all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, trust me, you don't want to see it. And I'm like, yeah, but I want to see people's reactions. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? That's so funny. So you say you have a bit about your flight attendant stuff. Yeah. How do you normally write your jokes? Uh, you know, honestly, I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, I, 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 you know, people ask me that question all the time. And I'm like, I just think of funny things. You know, like that make me laugh, and yeah. it just kind of comes to me like rat.
then if I have a chance, then I might, you know, like hit an open mic and just go try it out and see where that beat lands. Yeah, and see, so you test it. You know, and then and then I kind of just like, you know, go through my head and go, how can I say this funnier? How can yeah. I say this funnier? How can yeah. I say this funnier? You know, where, yeah. where can I add more punch to this, right? And so then that's where the process of like, mm. and a lot of it, like I said, for me, I, I work shit out on stage a lot. Yeah. You know, because um, I kind of feel like that's where my, my funny comes out, like my instinctive like want desire need to make people laugh like i'll be on stage and i'll be like saying some shit that i kind of had an idea that was funny and then naturally the punch will come out because i'll just yeah. see how people are laughing and reacting to it but how do you deal with hecklers how do i deal with hecklers oh you know what honestly um i've been lucky enough that i don't really get too many heckles um i have had a couple that have been insane but what i what i what i did when i first started doing comedy i keep looking in like i'm super cheesy i'm like looking into the camera for the audience is that what we're supposed to be doing whatever like, you want whatever you want uh, okay. the ones that are just listening can't even see you. oh guys well if you're just listening you're missing a lot of like camera eye contact yeah, she's stuff actually that's nude. happening here she's you actually know? nude <laughs> she's actually <laughs> i'm not out just to be yeah. shitty and so i had heard about this room and i was pretty new to comedy and then one night like cause i was like always like mic after mic after mic like you would see me everywhere just trying to like really you know like figure out how i had to do what i had to do um because i was like yeah I, that's a whole other thing i was like is this a career or not figure it out go so i was going to all the mics i could and then one sunday i was going to this mic that got canceled um, and then somebody told me, they're like, well, why don't you just go Danger Room? That's the only one that's open tonight. And I was like, okay. So I went by and I got there and it was just dudes, just guys. There was no women. Women don't go on the show. It was like a whole thing because I guess like, you know, like a lot of the, yeah. the, the heckles from people started becoming quite like shit and sexist or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic. Um, uh, so I was like, all right, um, here we are. And it was just like a bunch of guys. And then I was like, okay, let me just, let me just do this. Like, just fucking go do this. Just fucking go do this. And one of like the comedians that I knew, he's like, you got this girl. I'm like, yeah, I got this. I got this. Right. He's like, just talk shit. Like you do when you're on the pool table. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. On the right? pool table. Yeah. When I play pool at the end of one of the mics with him, oh, and I yeah, talk yeah. a lot of shit. He's yeah. like, just do that. Just yeah, talk yeah, shit. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got this. Yeah. So I go to sign up and the host, uh, Dan Guyry, I go up to him. I'm like, hey, man, uh, I'd love a spot. And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. You can sit anywhere you'd like. He's like, I, I was like, no, no, like a spot like on the, on the lineup. Okay. And he was like, oh, <laughs> you're a comedian? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm a comedian. And he's like, sure, how do I spell your name? And I'm like, uh, A-L-I. And as he's like writing it, he's like, do you want to just sit down for a couple minutes? And I'm like, what? And he's like, have you heard of this show? I'm like, yeah. He's like, why don't you watch for a couple minutes before you decide to sign up? I'm like, how about you put your, my name down like everybody else's and I'll see what happens. Yeah. And then he kind of looks at me because I just got defensive and I just told him off. And they're like, why did I just tell off the fucking host of the show? So now I'm on the list. Long story, he comes out to come and let everybody know all the comics that are waiting outside. There's like 30 of us waiting. He's like, hey, guys, listen, I had a bunch of pros drop in today. I just don't have space for all of you. I'm really sorry, but I'll try my best to get you on next week. He's like, I still have the spot for you, spot for you. Then he goes to me. He's like, and I still got a spot for you, but he's going to be short and dirty. And I'm like, great, great. Let's go. Title my sex tape. What's that? Title my <laughs> You know what I mean? So I, I, I go up there. I get on stage. And they have, the, so the God mic is like the mic in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. 
So the god mic is usually the, the host has it. Yeah. He heckles you along with the audience. <laughs> so they gave the god mic to some drunk comedian who's now heckling me <laughs> oh my god. as I'm on stage. And I'm like, I'm going back at him, like fucking talking shit right back to him. Because I, it, I used to, I, I had like a bunch of guy cousins when I was younger that were like 10 years older than me. They were like, you can play with us. But if you, if you get hurt and start to cry, you're never allowed to play with us again. Like yeah. be fucking tough. You know, I watched them make fun of each other. They would like, we'd play 21 basketball. Yeah. These guys are like literally your height. Yeah. I'm a freaking 11 year old girl. And they're like, no, you have to stand at the same line as the rest of us if you want to play with us. Like we don't make exceptions. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like I had this tough skin. Yeah, you had trauma filled ammo. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> I told people that too. Like, why do you go to the danger room? I'm like, because I come from abuse. This feels like home. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so familiar. <laughs> anyway, so. I heckle, I, I, I heckle back this guy to the point where he finally gets off the mic because I've just like made fun of him so much. And the audience is like kind of almost on my side at this okay. point because they are seeing how much I'm handing it to this idiot. And then uh, finally, uh, when, when I get him off, I'm like, yo, where's the host of this show, bro? I thought I was supposed to be heckled by a professional. <laughs> So he grabs the mic, Dan, and he I, he, I reminded him of this story the last time I saw him. He goes, okay, Ilya, everybody's pretty impressed by your confidence for a woman. <laughs> Of course nobody wants to be heckled yeah and i've had moments like i had a tv taping where a woman started telling me a story in the middle of my oh, fucking bit no. like literally started talk just in insanity where in that moment i was still so new and i knew it was a tv taping the audience had been briefed not to not to interrupt and nobody was interrupted until it was me and i was on this tv taping with people who've been done doing comedy for 20 years i was yeah. already so intimidated on that lineup i was the freshest one there um, so like that really like I was like oh but I handled it you know what I mean um, and then since then anytime I've been heckled I've been able to to just the other night actually here I got heckled hey. yeah in Perth in Perth in, uh, in Frio, Frio actually I was oh, yeah. in Frio I got heckled in Frio um, I was making fun of Man, I was making jokes. The, my set, I smashed, yeah? Every single joke is hitting. We're having such a good time. And then the, my last joke where I'm closing on a joke about the inner thigh gap, and I make a joke about the, like, the inner thigh gap being like nonsense. Classic Do you know female what I mean? comedian. Talking Classic about, female talking comedian. Talking about some female body parts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Body parts and yeah. shit. What are you going to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> always something sexual always than every something. female comedian. We have to. That's all. We're so limited, guys. Right. We have like nothing to talk about except right. for that, our bodies. <laughs> Just yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, so I, uh, so I mean, and then she goes, she pipes up from the back. I think she thought she was being funny, to be honest. But she goes, I'm offended by that. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> and she goes, I'm offended by that. I'm like, about the inner thigh gap. And she's like, yeah. And she's like, I have one. I was like, okay. I'm like, good. I'm like, is it working for you? And she's like, yes. I'm like, well, good for you, sis. Then you shouldn't be offended. I'm like, <laughs> plus this shit ain't about you. This is about me. So can we get back to me for a real quick second? And the audience just laughed about it. You know what I mean? And we just kind of moved on. I think she said that she was offended, not that's offensive. You know, the whole Ricky Gervais thing? Um, no. He goes, he goes, um, he hates when people say that's offensive. Oh, he, yeah. And he comes back to them and goes, that's not offensive. You're, You're offended. offended. Yeah. Oh, At least you said it like that, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. good. That's good. I, I never heard that before, but I yeah. like that. There's a very distinct yeah. difference for sure. I mean, for me, like uh, I've I've been asked to do to try it to try comedy, like stand up comedy oh, yeah. forever, and um, I just don't 
I have the worst kind of short term memory. Okay. Uh, well, not the worst, but I, I never really kind of have the confidence to overcome that. Not, not anything else, like heckling, bombing, doing shit. It's forgetting. Right. That's the, that's the kind of pivot. But, um, yeah, for me, for me it, I'll get there. I'll get there. I yeah, think, man. I like think I, I need to – it's like <laughs> I find shit so funny in my head. Right. Then when I tell someone else or trying to explain it, yeah. I either over-explain it and they're like get to the point. Right. Or I under-explain it and then like, they don't get it. So I need to find that kind of middle ground. And it's also depending on like what style I want to do. Is it quick and punchy, which I don't really find funny. Right. I like the – kind of longer stories with a bit of like sugar coating throughout the story like Dave Chappelle does yeah yeah um but uh yeah and and like kind of like that mid-range like my favorite comedian from your neighborhood um Jim Carrey yeah yeah I grew up just watching his stuff listening to his routines and and that and and I always would try to be funny at school but I'd always be funny to my nerdy friends or the kids who are younger than me Right. I was hilarious to them. But the ones that were my age, I was never funny to them. I, I, I couldn't understand why. Right. And then when I became a footy player, I was not funny at all to them. So the jocks and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'd have like a genius moment and I'd feel like a million bucks yeah. and I got them to laugh. But I wasn't like in that. So- and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe that's my trauma, traumatic thing. And right. I'm like, if I can't make everyone laugh, I don't want to try. Oh, no, nah, see, that's that's where I, I would disagree, you know? Like, you can't, you, 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 you're always going to find that there's, like, certain people that are going to be mm. more into your stuff than others. Well, that's what I mean. Like, on TikTok, 1.6 million followers. Mm-hmm. I have a whole bunch of people that think I'm interesting, funny, and I give value. Wow. Right? On the internet, and I'm not saying that I can hide, but on the internet, you don't know who, follow, who doesn't follow you. Right. Um, and, well, the ones that aren't your followers, I guess. But also the ones that don't like your stuff. I get heckled on there yeah. or hate comments. Yeah. Um, but I have uh, – I'm not an in-the-moment sort of – I'm not witty enough to, like, clap back quickly. Right. But in, in I'm getting – and I, I feel like I'm practicing. Okay. Like I'm using online as practice. Like someone would comment and – and with enough experience, with enough time, because people become predictable. Right. They're not original. Right. Right? right. And you heard it all before. And the best thing is if you have the same heckle but from a different person. Right. Um, Jimmy Carr. Jim, is it Jimmy Carr? Uh, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy. Fa- no. The one. The one. He, Jimmy Carr. I think it's Jimmy Carr. He. <laughs> someone said, when does the comedy start? Oh yeah, and he goes <laughs> something about it. the guy. He just went or goes on this rant, and he goes, "You see, there are people in this world who get a lot of women. There are guys in this world who get a lot of women, and you know they sleep with a lot of women, and they're and they're and they're legends. They're legends, right. but it's not quite the same for females. Females who are considered uh, ones that sleep around and get a lot of uh, men, they're called your mum." And I was like, that is so good. <laughs> but I can, I can tell that he's had that response before. Right. And he's practiced that heckle before. Right. You just go into automatic mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I used to be a school teacher. So right. I got to practice that there. And I was hilarious to the kids. Okay. Right? And my favorite kind of heckle for the kids when they would start disrupting my lesson, um, before school I would always walk my dogs, you know, Go yeah. for a walk, and I'd always have um, you know poo bags left over in my um, pocket, not not full ones, like empty right. ones still. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd take them to school. I just forget they're in my pocket. And a kid would be like, you know, sir, blah 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 blah, like talking shit. Right. And I'd be like, hey hey hey, hang on, get my poo bag out. I'm like, do you reckon you can just grab this and just talk into that? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it would land with the year tens, the right. 11s, the younger kids. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> they no. get offended. That's so tell funny. Their just go me. start crying into the bag. But just going back to like my comedy thing, like online, I'm getting a lot of experience, and then I feel like that will then transition into honestly, the uh, you know, and that's that's the, that's the the biggest thing is just mm. being open to that, mm. right? Like I think that for. You know, when folks ask me all the time uh, about, like, you know, my career path and how I came to get to here, to here, to here. Mm. And it's just like, honestly, it's just being open to stuff all the time. 
and 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 you know working towards the things that you want while also understanding that you may not even not even know what you want yeah. you know because you may not have experienced that part yeah. of life as yet right and I think that everything feeds to everything. So uh, I'll give you an example. Yeah, um, when I started comedy, uh, folks right away were like, "Oh my God, look at her stage presence. She's a natural. Look at that stage presence." Yeah. Would you be walking around, or how would you? Be doing yeah, that? I walk around. I'm very confident. I got the mic. I'm doing my thing. You know what I mean? And I and I do have that stage presence. But everybody always said it was natural, and I'm like, bro, I spent ten years on an airplane making announcements yeah, true. facing passengers yeah. who are all looking at me announcements in in english and french you right. know what i mean two passengers and having to control the energy of the room sometimes delivering shit news on an already shit day yeah. we are further delayed ladies and gentlemen and needing to do so in a way to keep them calm yeah. keep them listening to me make sure that they follow any instructions that I give them and all this you think that I can't get on stage with confidence trying to make people laugh after that shit do you know what I mean yeah, so true. it wasn't a natural stage presence it was just that I learned it in a different setting yeah. and so like everything that you're doing on your TikTok right now is also going to feed into yeah, I'm, whatever I'm doing you're doing reps. for your I'm comedy. You know what I mean? Yeah. In different ways, we never know mm -hmm. how life is going to teach us what yeah. we use in the future. Yeah. But all of these experiences that we have, and that's what I was saying to you earlier, like I feel so... Like it was a gift to have so many experiences in life because you never know what those things are going to do, but they always end up feeding into yeah. something else that evolves into what you create, right? The, the other thing as well for comedy, um, for that style of comedy and for m my personal journey, mm. I never really like doing anything unless I see myself pushing for the top. Yeah. Like, Fair. like seriously, for right. the top. Like anything I do, uh, like I, when I played footy, I wanted to get into AFL. I got into semi-professional and I was looked at by scouts and then I had a knee injury oh. and and then I started losing the passion and then just I fell out of it. Okay. Cuz as soon as I thought, you know what? I'm not I'm not going for the top anymore. Right. What's the point? Yeah. You know, and others would disagree and they would say, you know, it's camaraderie, it's fun, it's an experience and you got to try it and I know we'll try it still one day. Playing footy. Uh no, uh, comedy. Oh, comedy. Stand up comedy. Um but I, I just I have this mindset that if if I'm not wanting the, to be the best, I don't want to try it. Like, the the thing is though, when you need to try it to see if you like it to then go to that yeah. on on that pursuit of you know becoming one of the top tier people. I mean, I so I guess that that that's interesting that what you're saying and I and I I, I you know absolutely I I get it. Like, kudos to having that kind of ambition. Mm. But <laughs> who's interviewing who now? <laughs> so I guess I have a question. And I'm not saying that if you're not aiming to be the top female but, comedian, but is there such a like, thing? Can the, women be funny? Uh, well, I mean, not yet. I'm trying to actually prove that women yeah. might be a little funny. Yeah. That's, that's is there a female Netflix specialist? No, yeah. no. In fact, I mean, the like fact legit, that they I let women talk one. at all is just, it's appalling. <laughs> Western countries. <laughs> These, it's, it's a thing now. You it's guys a trend. are really, you're ruining it for the rest of them. Do you know what I mean? It's a trend. Um, yeah. <laughs> Stop this progression. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I, I guess like, uh, what is the best? What do you consider the best uh, measured by whom? What? Okay, yes, go on. Did. Yes, go on, did. tell me that one. Okay, so... Sorry for the interruption, but this show would not be possible without the help of Bright Tank Brewery. They are the major sponsor of the Sevo Show. Huge shout-outs to them. Check them out. Great beers, great people, 
great everything. And uh, well, let's get back to the episode. Uh, so the start of it is a little, uh, so I, as I mentioned, I was a flight attendant. Yeah. And my whole thing was I just, I wanted to travel the world. I, I really wanted to see the world. I was, you know, on my own since I was young. I didn't have a lot of, you know, means. We grew up poor. Mm. Still and alone? So, huh? Still alone? Still? Still alone? Still, am I still alone? Yeah. In life? Right now. Right now? Yeah. Like single? No, I have a... Again, a, I'm trying to find yeah, that I'm like, am I still alone? Can I tell you something hilarious, which Please. I'm going to turn into a bit, by the way. I haven't figured out how. Yeah. I'm filling out this fucking... You Australians, I swear <laughs> to God. I'm filling out the Australian visa application, yeah? Yeah. And so it comes up with the question about your status, yeah. right? And then asks, are you married? Are you uh, de facto? Are you divorced? Uh, are you um, uh, uh, never married? Um, are you uh, uh, widowed? Yeah, did you start um, crying? And I'm like, Neither. why can't it just be single? Why never married? Why is there a judgment on this one? <laughs> like, they didn't say, like, wid instead of widowed, you didn't write, like, is your wife dead? You know what I mean? Or, like, instead of divorce, like, you fucked shit up and you cheated and you couldn't work it out. Like, why for this, yeah. the one for single, why you, does that have to be, like, gay. never married? Like, why does it have to be so judgy? <laughs> yeah. It was so funny to me. But, yeah. um, yes, I'm still alone. No, no, I'm, no I, I'm in a relationship. You know my dude, actually. Um... So I, I <laughs> imagine <laughs> imagine an over. other box. Got married, realized I was gay. You know what I mean. Divorced, and I killed her. I'm a widow. Now. I just like honestly, like they they should they should if they're gonna be explicit, they should be explicit about all of them. And I want like a bunch of scenarios. Yeah. You know, I want to be able to turn around and like petition to add more scenarios and be like, I don't yeah. feel represented by this fucking drop down <laughs> menu. There's you another know what group I mean? of people that are uh, <laughs> that have been carrying on for about three years now that suit that sort of shit. Uh -huh. Yeah. But yeah, so I got this group on. Basically, yeah. I was um, I was I was working as a flight attendant. Yeah, <coughs> traveling the world. That yeah. was my whole thing. I just wanted to see the world. I was seeing it for dead cheap. Like I was using these flight passes. I was using all my days off to go to other countries and just really go and explore and and do these things I had dreamt about, which was amazing. Uh, then my partner um, ended up uh, getting sick for a little bit, and so we stopped traveling. Um, while he was recovering for well over a year. Mm. And it was the first time I was like, I had all this time off and I, I needed something to do to like, you know, occupy myself. I signed up for Groupon so that I could get discounts on like Zumba classes and all these different classes I was trying to take, like yoga classes and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then I got a Groupon for a comedy writing class and I was like, oh, there's something to do, this will be fun. And buddy, as soon as I like reopened that creativity that I had yeah. like nestled away from my childhood, like I, it, it like unleashed something in me and like it completely changed. The comedy writing was for Second City for sketch comedy writing. Cool. So that's where I started. And then after that, I just could not stop. Like I literally changed my whole life trajectory based on a Groupon. <laughs> so did you, when you were growing up, did you watch like comedy shows or like com like funny movies and stuff? Were you more into those? Yeah, or? I liked funny movies. I liked acting when I was very young. Yeah. Um, I was I was an actor, like when I was young. I actor would, or actress? Uh, act, uh, well, they say actor now for both. But oh, it's, really? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I, uh, here I am trying to be all PC. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> well, no, I mean it doesn't really matter to me. Like it's like when people mm. say like, "Oh, you were an air hostess." I'm like, "Yeah, sure," but like they call it flight attendant. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But but you were nominated for best actress, yeah. nominated for best actress yes. at the tenth Which Canadian means I did Screen win. Awards, <laughs> right? Yeah. So let's 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 debunk this. I'm gonna have a dig here. I want to see how you respond. Yeah, yeah. Nominated Best Actress, uh -huh. amazing. Yes, but at the tenth best, no, at the at the tenth Canadian Screen Awards. Yes, that's kind of like saying I'm a vet nurse. What does that mean? A vet exactly. Nurse. You're not. You're, you're not a. You're not a. A vet. Yes. But you're not a nurse. You're a vet nurse. Like like. Cool uh, for vet nurses. Oh, like you're the nurse for a vet. Oh, yes. I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like it ain't shit. <laughs> I didn't say that. You said that. You said that. I've got a few vet nurse friends. Yo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> for all I the vet nurses out there, you matter. I couldn't, I couldn't come out. Uh, yeah, vet nurses, you matter. Um, you know, they help with dogs. Um, but, yeah, 
Canadian. I know. I that's what I always nominated. tell people. People are like, "You're Academy. <laughs> you're an Academy Award nominated actress." I'm like, "Yeah, but it's a Canadian Academy Award." And I was just nominated. I didn't actually but, win. But but <laughs> but I will say that the year before, Michelle Pfeiffer won. So it ain't shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it ain't yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like I was like, I'm in the same category as Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is um, it in your LinkedIn profile? I don't have a LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, honestly, here's the thing, yeah? Hmm. Uh, I don't know how much further you researched this. That was my first movie. That was on Wikipedia. That was, I my, gave up that was my first after. movie. Okay. That was my very first role. Yeah. I scored a lead role in a film, which was a super independent film. Like, if you... Like, some of the clothes I'm wearing in that movie are mine. Like, You're I brought right from now. home. Yeah. <laughs> Because they didn't even have money like for wardrobe. Yeah. And then this film. And you were the only up, actress. And I was the only. <laughs> actually, it was a huge cast. It was a huge monologue. It was a huge <laughs> cast. It was just me doing. It was just doing stand up actually, and they were like mm, acting. I'm this like, you didn't movie. laugh. They didn't laugh. That's yeah. what they're saying. <laughs> no, no, it was so like for what it was, there was like no expectation of this. My my, as a brand new a actress, uh, you know, in the scene. Um, I was contacted through my website because they were actually like having a hard time finding somebody for this role. Mm. And they thought maybe a comedian might be the, the way to go. And so they contacted me through my website. I was in Australia at the time. And so when I auditioned for it, the thing is, is I read the script and I was like, this is actually really fucking good. Okay. You know, and I didn't, didn't get excited about most of the scripts that were coming my way at this point because mm -hmm. I was getting some shit. You know what I mean? I was brand new and I was like, mm, I don't care about any of this stuff. Yeah. This one I actually cared about. So, like, that's what I'm saying to you. Like, when we. Well, I, I just uh, just now before I left, uh, I was filming an episode of Law and Order. Oi. Uh, ee. You know what? I got a quick story for you about that one. Tell you know me. the intro in the criminal justice system. Da, 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 yeah, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. Uh, I AI'd that voice and I started scripting some random shit to advertise my. Oh, <laughs> hilarious, yo! So That's good. too funny. I grew up watching that shit. Did so, you? I so still you, never watched it. I are you the <laughs> like? What what role do you play? Are you a victim? Are you a criminal? Uh, are you both? I am uh, playing the mother oh. of a victim. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Right. How, yeah, do you, yeah. how do you get that part? You have a manager. That I have an agent. Yeah, cool. and I get sent auditions. Um, cool. You know, I. Um, Did you go to acting school or anything like that? No, no, I didn't. So you don't have to go to acting school and you end up on Law and Order. Yes. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, and this is like the overarching theme of this show. It's not mm -hmm. just me talking to interesting people. It's how you can do something without following the traditional. <gasps> You know, this you need to be I'm fucking about. going to acting school. You need to know people. You need to suck no. this guy's dick. Oh, well, that I... <laughs> No, no. We'll get to that. We No, honestly, that is what I'm all about. I tell mm. people this all the time, man. Even, look, when I, when I became a flight attendant, not yeah. for nothing, but there are people going to school to be flight attendants. I didn't go to school. I didn't take any of those classes. Are you kidding me right now? I not. Nah, what for? What to teach me how so to? You just do got into service? it because you like they they were down a, a a flight attendant and you're like yeah I'll do it yeah yeah, yeah I was like ah uh. group on I got a group on for this I got this. a group on for this <laughs> no but but like there's always a way in yeah you know um for me I like I said I wanted to work in travel I literally just did research I researched all the different I wrote yeah. down a list of all the different work travel jobs you could do yeah. Uh, so like tour guide, flight attendant, uh, travel agent, like a cruise ship worker, all this stuff. Researched all of them, saw what had to be done, and then I actually talked to people. So you did the, you did the hard work. 
you've done you did the hard work the research the community the out the reach out yeah people don't get past the first stage and well, this is the this is the point yeah this is the point kids ask me all the time sev i want to be a content creator like you i'm like great show me what you've got so far oh i haven't done anything yet i'm like what the fuck Go go film something. Yeah. Give me something to something give you to feedback yeah. on. Actually do it. Actually prove to me that you actually want to do it. Totally. Right? Do the research yourself. And they ask me how. I'm like, Google it. But then I give them some answers because I've got teaching background. I, that I went to uni for, by the way. I didn't just become a teacher. I did kind of. But anyway, then you did the outreach. And I feel like younger generations... They don't want to communicate because they're all iPad babies. I know. They don't know how to communicate. And that's, I mean, this is what, this goes back, ties back to what we were saying at the very beginning, yeah? Which I said to you, I said, I feel like I'm rich from experiences from other people. Yeah. Everything I've done. So because I went, I talked to people rather than actually just reading what was like the, the cat, I found out from talking to folks that. As a flight attendant, I would have the most time off and flexibility in my schedule to be able to then actually take uh, the flight passes and go and travel. That's perfect. Where if I was, uh, for example, a tour guide, yes, they would send me to places and I would be, uh, everything would be paid for, my trip would be paid for, my meals would be paid for, my flights would be paid for. Amazing. Sounds great. Except for I would be in Greece taking a group of 15 people to all of these places to go and see the, the monuments over and over again. And I would have this much time on my own to yeah. actually go and explore the way that I like to travel. Yeah. So like, but only because I spoke with them and found out how much downtime do you have? How much does it actually pay? how much flexibility is yes. in your schedule all these oh. questions that when I asked the people that's where I made my decision when I became a comedian all I did was ask questions yeah. everywhere and even now like people are like oh how did you get into the festivals across the world because I talk to the artists that do it yeah I talk to all of the comedians that do it. and I go hey What's Edinburgh like? What was uh, Melbourne like? How do you sell your tickets? How yeah. did you do that? You know what I mean? And people are always surprisingly willing to share information if you ask it nicely. You know, there's there's, uh, there's an unknown optimism about wanting to do something or wanting to try something and thinking that that's a thing for you. Yes. But then you get into it. If you haven't asked all the questions, mm -hmm. you realize and become known to the pessimism. Right. You're like, oh shit. I didn't realize all of this. Mm. That's a lot of hard work. Oh, I don't want to do that. I yeah. don't want to tour guide 15 people around Greece. I want to sit with my drink and, you know, do fuck all. Yeah. I don't want to talk, talk to anybody. And, like, and that's been my story for a while. I would get into something, crack it, and be like, mm. yep, I figured it out. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh, next level, no, not for me. Right. And, you know, and I've, I've done that over and over and over again. And that's been my experience. But that's because, but that, but the beauty of that is that you tried it. I tried it, yeah. And so you actually have real, yeah. like, a expectation yeah. of what it is and, and you can make a decision yeah. versus just, like, living this fantasy of, like, I would love to do this but never actually... Man, I, so the thing is, is that I, I also, like, I've, I've always said that, you know, every bit of life teaches you something. When I was young, I very early on in life saw how life can just get taken away like this. You know, life is super short. I saw loved ones uh, pass at a young age. And for me, that was like a real thing where I was like, oh, like, it doesn't make sense to me all this. Like people, you know, oh, I'll wait till I retire to travel. Uh, what are you talking about? What yeah. if you never make it? You know what I mean? Or I'll, I'll wait until this blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, like do everything that you want right yeah, now. Sure. Live life like, like with, like, I don't know, just as if <laughs> like, you know, you got, you, you got a limit on your back. Do you I know what I mean? I think it's the like, fear of uh, being homeless if you do it all now and you run out of money. Or being able to not make ends meet, or make make pay the yeah. bills and stuff, and and that's like a it, it's a real thing, and it I is get a real it. Thing. I get it. People want security. People want comfort. But and or we've been taught that that's what's important. See, yeah. the thing is, is that like I could get into this heavy set, but oh, like, society, man, society. society has taught us what to value in life, but mm. like really, actually, what is valuable? The things that we have. The one chance you, you know? get at trying shit. Like we we literally. Oops, sorry. <laughs> we. Uh, <laughs> We, we have, like, I don't know, I, I really feel like we have to reassess what it is that we think is important in life and really make decisions based on um, 
what we instinctively value rather than what has been taught to us as a value. Because growing up, you know, you're taught that like you're supposed to have like a house with things in it and like, you know, you're supposed to have like job security and you're supposed yeah. to have like a retirement plan and all this stuff. Now, if you look at everything that's happening in the world, yeah, and like we don't have to get too heavy into politics or anything like that, but you look at like so much of what's happening in the world in terms of, you know, we're seeing, you know, uh, the abuse, the absolute abuse of lives all over the world in order to make the things that we consume, yeah. right? And this consumer society that's been taught to us, you know, we were never really given the chance to follow through on the mental process of what, at what cost, Yeah, you know, this is what I value at what cost. Yeah. And if we actually look at that, like, Oh, you know what? At the cost of other human lives. No, no. this is not a value to me. Yeah. Right. So I really think that the idea of like reevaluating, reassessing what's important to us will be a key to unlocking like a better, a better, humanity in general like a better uh, you know um future for ourselves to be able to create a more ethical and a more like like a kinder world mm. but also one that is more fulfilling to self because right now we are all taught that we're supposed to do certain things take certain steps ha that security is valuable that money is valuable that like you know what i mean all of that stuff but it, it is not happiness fulfillment yeah. you know those are the things that are way more valuable how many uh, in my in my show um the where you from from show the last one that i did one of the things that i say to the audience which doesn't sound like comedy but i make it funny i promise but i tell them i say when you go home today google the five biggest regrets of people on their deathbed mm. great guide to life yeah because that's when you really recognize what you value in life is when you run out of it right that's right and so like living your life by that standard means that you'll have fewer regrets at the end, then maybe it's time to reevaluate, recalibrate your, your trajectory by looking at life from that perspective. I love it. You go know? off, go off. Absolutely go off. I, love I want a mic drop, but it's attached. So I can't. <laughs> we've got a mic here. So, um, with your career now, you've got all these different revenue streams. Um, yeah. Uh, and opportunities and you've built them up over the years mm -hmm. um do you worry about not getting the next gig or not getting the next acting job and things like that yes how do you navigate th through that honestly i mean <laughs> uh it is really hard that's probably the hardest part of uh this this lifestyle is uh just having faith that it's going to work out, you know, the way that people have faith in religion, I guess, I mm. don't know, you know, like, I, because there's nothing tangible in front of me saying that this will work. Right. Um, and there is definitely like this, 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 this constant, like in the back of my brain where I'm like, just kind of going over my bank balance almost all the time. I feel that. Right. Because Yes, like, okay, I just landed law and order. Great, that's going to pay me, like, this much money. That's great. But that money might have to last me for the next three months because right now I just had a tour got canceled. And uh, so that money that was going to come in is not coming in anymore. And so now the only thing that I have that's, like, real money coming in is uh, for this next little while is this festival that I'm doing, but that's not going to pay me until March. So well, as soon as that law and order money comes in, that's what's going to keep me afloat until this festival festival pays me out and then that's when it was going to keep me afloat but I'm still trying to put money aside so that I can build on other projects that I want to invest in for example my own podcast which is going to cost a little bit of money to start off with which you know what I mean so like you're constantly like for me though that I think that the key thing is is that I keep reinvesting in myself that is a right? big that's a big key I'm glad you mentioned that yeah yeah that is that is like one of the most important things and like you wouldn't have it any other way would you would you go? Would you go back to flight attending? No, but I do miss it sometimes. I agree. I do miss I agree. it sometimes. I miss you know? teaching. I miss um, teaching. Yeah. I wouldn't go back to it. No. I get to teach through this media. Yeah, I get totally. to teach more than the thirty-two kids in the classroom. Yeah, I have kids who are asking me <laughs> every five seconds in TikTok. Sev, can you go to this shopping center? I'm here today. Right. Sounds so weird. Right. It sounds like. 
bit awkward. awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like so when I do really? the when I, <laughs> well, I gave away fifty ice creams uh, at the ice cream shop on Friday. Oh, and I had it all arranged, and I've got a working with children's Where was check. Where's my I'm, I'm invitation sweet. for this? It was on Instagram. You should have should have seen it. Oh, and, I love um, ice cream. But stuff. I always I always end with um, uh, invite your mum or share this with your mum. Yeah. So that it's always like, hey, I'm getting the kids involved, but share this with your mum so she's involved. Right. And for the ones that don't have mums, because I don't know, your dad or whoever, it's like I'm I'm saying to the kids, I want to become the guy. Or the influencer, quote unquote, that actually cares, right. that actually is going the distance and doing the right thing, and not pissing it up the wall, not dating a Kardashian right. or anything like that. Just like going all the way through and going, what's wrong with him? He's going to fuck it up. He's going to do some dodgy. He's right. going. He's a scam artist. So he's right. a he's a kitty. I don't take those. Like the only jokes I don't take are the the. The kitty touching ones; right. those those jokes are not on. Yeah, because that that's something that is just like never funny. Right. Um, like the pedo jokes. I say pedo because um, Ricky Gervais <laughs> talks about it all the time. But when it's on you and your fan base as kids, yeah, um, that's when it gets a little bit Gross. kind of off key. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's just like, yeah. I've, I say that now and that's probably going to unhinge a whole bunch more. Right. And there's no way to kind of go with it because it's just weird. It's just shut it down. You know, like, what makes this person so special? You mm. know, what makes uh, this person special enough to be able to rise above the masses and achieve something of recognition? Yeah. And honestly, like, I really in my heart believe, and I know it sounds so cheesy, but I really believe we all have that special in us. It's just a matter of are we willing to dig for it, risk risk ourselves like not necessarily being successful the first second third time round you know and and sacrifice right yeah. what are you willing to give up that's so, a big one like uh, uh going back to the flight attendant thing there's a bunch of people that became flight attendants over the years that i was there yeah put that right there that within a couple months six months quit Mm. Because they were like, oh, this is not the lifestyle that I want. Yeah. And I get that. And I super get that, right? But, informed but they wanted to come yeah. in for all the good reasons, but they weren't willing to, to do the, the shit, which was deal with angry passengers yeah. <coughs> from I, time to time. And or that's what I tell, that's what have I tell kids. Hand you where every other month I'm able to go yeah. to another country. So like, it's like, what are you willing to sacrifice? What am I willing to sacrifice for this? I'll tell you, I went from living from a one bedroom plus den apartment comfortably in my own space, which I loved. I moved from there to living with flatmates again. Mm. I went backwards because I knew that I had to sacrifice those things so I wouldn't be uncomfortable financially yeah. starting out and as people, an artist. People don't want to sacrifice the comfort for... 
their dreams. Exactly. And then and then that means that that dream's not strong enough and then that's okay. Yeah. But I, then don't don't hold your hold mm. down the fulfillment of your life based on a dream mm. that's not really your dream because there's that other side of things where people are like, "Oh, I wish I could have done this. I wish I could have done that." And it's like, "No, no, you can." But by saying I wish, you're actually undermining the value of everything you do yeah. have. You should be doing exactly what you wish. So if what you wish is to work this job at this sh store that gives you a salary, ain't nothing wrong with that. No. Because maybe that fulfills your wish to be able to have weekends off to go surfing, which is really what your wish yeah. is. Then go for it. But if you're doing neither of the things, none of the things that you wish for, then that's where your life is at a place where you've yeah. got to really re reassess. And Self, like Self-awareness and self-esteem together are a powerful thing. Mm. And I wish people can somehow grasp that better yeah they don't have self-awareness sometimes it's a very late in their lives and i wish for my followers the younger ones especially I just my brain was on and right. I'm like fuck I need to go to sleep again and I think I was awake for about an hour and a half just laying there just thinking about shit and I'm like man if I just had a cushiony nine to five job I'd just be like ah oh, not my problem I'm gonna wake up at eight or seven or call in sick call in oh, sick oh, oh, or clock in clock out and then not give a shit but now I'm 24 seven yeah. and I love it because I'm in control completely. Yeah. I love that control. Totally. S other people want someone else to control it and that, that's their comfort. But for me, no thank you. Yeah. And other people come to me and go, Seb, I want to be a creator. I'm like, okay, great. Can you do this, 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 and this? And they're like, oh, what? Yeah. I have, I have marketing teams that hire me to train them. To, do the, to teach them how to do the socials properly because mm -hmm. they're all outsourcing them to agencies who yeah. aren't creative either. And they want to save money. They hire me and I show them all the steps and I can see all their internal marketing like girls. A lot of them are female, yeah. mid-20s, white female marketing. And they got the degree because it was the easiest one to get from their low entrance score. Right. <laughs> it's fucking true. They're not creative either. Yeah. But their bosses are saying, you need to get more on TikTok. You need to get more on Instagram Reels. Right. I come in and show them and they're like, what? And I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing here? It's marketing. You, right. need, to, you need to showcase the brand. Yeah. And then I, I, I'm teaching them from the beginning. I'm like, you're, you're in this. You've right. got three years of, of a degree. Right. But I can see in their eyes they don't want to be there anymore. Right. But they're stuck with the salary. That self-awareness I I is churning and I can see it. And I'm like, be real with yourself, please. That's, so I was actually going to circle back to that because that's where I wanted to ask you, what to you is self-awareness? And I think that's what, yeah, exactly. Be honest with yourself. Being honest with yourself. Paying you know? attention to yourself. I did a TEDx talk about this. Oh, did you? I said, pay attention to yourself. Yeah. I paid attention to myself in my 20s yeah. when I no longer wanted to be a footy player. Yeah. I got injured, picked up a camera, loved it. That's why Sev's Picks is a thing. Oh, cool. And then I started doing that and I was like, this is amazing. Right. I can do whatever I want. I can take a photo and, and edit it however I want, post it. I can get no likes. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm going to have 150 of these and no one's going to give a fuck. But I'm going to go back and go, that was shit, but look at me now. Yeah. And now look at me now, yeah. right? And then that self-awareness drew me into – obviously, I was doing teaching then. Right. 
And I was like, sweet, I've got a salary. I've got, I don't have to worry about anything for the next job, government job as well. Right. It's not only um, recession proof, it's pandemic proof. Right. But then I was like, what if I could make money from my passion, which was photography? And I was like, do I want to teach photography? Two things that I'm good at. Right. No, No, I don't want to teach photography. I like business because I used to be a personal trainer before all of this, keeping count how many things that I've done. And I loved teaching someone to be fitter, to be stronger, to be more mobile, to eat good shit, not Mm -hmm. bad shit. I was like, okay, teaching is definitely part of my life. Right. But not in the four walls of a classroom. Right. Not to an outdated curriculum. School school system's fucked. Yeah, yeah. We won't get into that. But I, I was like, all right, teaching something. I'm good at business. And then I did a wedding. Uh, I did wedding photography, successful wedding photography business. Okay. Still do it a little bit. Cool. And I was like, okay, business is a thing, right? Can I teach business? Mm, I don't think I have enough experience yet, right. but I like it. It's right. problem solving, pretty much. Right. It's very binary almost. And then marketing. I was like, I'm very good at marketing myself, but can I teach someone else? I can, but only if they're invested. In that space as much as I'm invested in my personal brand. I tell people from the start, if you want to build a following like me, if you right. want to build a brand like I've built my own personal brand, you have to be as invested in your own personal brand or whoever you're working with or for as much as I'm invested in my own. And most of them won't be. Right. I remember I had a, a consult with a chick in America. She was a wedding photographer for, of 10 years, okay. more experienced than I was. And she said, Sev, I want your help. And how I can build my brand further and get more clients. And we had a chat for an hour. And at the end, um, actually a week later, I followed up saying, hey, are you still keen on me helping you? She goes, Sev, appreciate your time. But what you've made me realize is I don't want to invest my money on your education. Not saying that it's bad, but I don't want to invest to improve myself. I've realized that wedding photography is no longer for me. I want to move on. And that was the best, one of the best feelings I've, I've had right. in that space. Because she actually evaluated yeah. it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, that was cool. And then she pivoted into something else. And um, I wasn't skillful or quick enough to ask her, okay, now you're doing that. Do you want me to teach you how to do the content right, for that? Right, right. I was just stoked that I was able to help someone move out of something they were no longer in right. love with. And that's kind of like the art of pivoting. Yeah. And most people can't pivot because they're stuck in a financial situation or they don't want to sacrifice and move back to that, the flatmates that's side. That's the thing, right? And I'm like, you got it. But that's but if, uh, so you get golden at handcuffs. At what cost are you not sacrificing, right? Oh, like one of those five regrets, I guarantee it. Yes. There's one of those five regrets exactly. when you're older. Exactly. And it's so it's honestly I think it's like so important that we recognize like Mm. folks that are in their 30s yeah will oftentimes feel like they are too far into their adulthood to be able to pivot that's uh, that's oftentimes it's the people that you'll meet because in your 20s you're like you're just trying to figure things out at the beginning Mm. and then you're supposed to have it figured out by the end so Mm. that you can coast into your 30s with an idea of what you're doing who you are however we as, as, as human beings have evolved so much. We live longer in our lives. We, we have evolved in, in the sense of like everything happens later. We're not having kids as young. We're not getting married as young. All this stuff is happening. Why is it that people feel that once they've decided what their career is, that this is what they have to stick to forever? You're supposed to evolve. Everything is evolving. In, in seven years from now, every cell in my body mm. will be different. Correct. I'm a different human from the, se- the human that was seven years yeah. ago. But you How lose brain it- cells. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that too. But like, you know what I mean? If you're, if you're not evolving, if you're yeah. not growing, if you're not changing... That's where the issue is. And I think that people will often feel this like, uh, you know, lack of uh, fulfillment or like this, like almost like as like a stir crazy feeling at, like later in life. You know, when we talk about like midlife crisis and yeah. all this stuff, because in their 30s, when they could have made that change, they're deciding not to. And then they're suffering through it because they didn't want to sacrifice. And so the sacrifice becomes their lives instead. Yeah. The sacrifice becomes the reality of their day to day doing something that they don't want to do because they didn't walk away from it. I, I say you're 35 years old. 
you graduated university at the age of 24 because you took a gap year, okay? And then now you've started building your career and you're 35 years old and you've got into like a managerial position in whatever you were doing because for the last 10 years you've been working really well in your field and now you feel like you should stay in that position because you've been doing this for the last 10 years yeah, plus a five-year five education. That's great, absolutely. But if you're going to retire at 65, that means you have another 30 years to go. 30 years. Mm -hmm. And every single day that you delay making that change will help you justify why you don't make the change because then you're adding numbers on this side of the fence. And then you're 40 now and now you've spent 15 years and now you've got 25 years left. And then you're every time you push back that decision, if you know that you're in a position where you're not feeling fulfilled in what you're doing, you have not wasted your time. I did not waste my time being a flight mm -hmm. attendant. I learned a bunch of skills that I ended up putting into being a comedian, including I wrote an entire show about the people that I've met and the experiences that I've had. You are never wasting your time making never. a change and all the things that you carry from your past, I, I am so sure, will still somehow fit into the puzzle of your future. You yeah. know, it just doesn't have to be everything, right? It's We talked about self-awareness. We talked about pivoting to something once you evolve. Mm -hmm. There's a middle, middle thing that's missing and that's financial fitness. Being financially fit unlocks the eas easier way to pivot or being able to let go and sacrifice. So you either become financially fit and learn how to invest properly and not mm -hmm. waste your money or whatever you have, you're happy to let go to make the pivot. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's really like I think that it's it's – like you know when you get on stage you were saying like you don't you're not afraid of bombing like people sometimes yeah. ask me about it yeah. as a comedian like are you afraid to bomb and i'm like tomorrow's another day i'll get back on my feet and i will be fine yeah. you know and i will start i will start from there and it's the same thing as like the the being willing to to kind of go backwards or sacrifice mm. with your finances like Maybe it's because I grew up with very little that I'm not afraid to lose what I have because I know I can I can survive on on yeah. whatever and maybe some folks that but so you have to ask yourself what is your bare minimum for you to feel comfortable in your lifestyle yeah. you know what are, I mean I would rather feel more fulfilled in my career do the things that I'm passionate about knowing that you know like uh, eventually down the road I will hopefully have the like the the means to be able to support the lifestyle that I want mm. but I would rather do that and sacrifice a little bit of the lifestyle stuff right now than stick to something that is not going to allow me to be creative that's not going to allow me to be able to <clears throat> feel fulfilled and 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 chase my passions and all this stuff but have a one bedroom plus 10 where I picked out the color of the paint <laughs> you know what I mean like who cares all right it's time for the red mic oh what's that so you hold that you keep it close to you because I don't have uh, the audio there, but just make sure you can see it there. That's perfect. All right, cool. So I'm just going to angle this a little bit. Okay. And then you just keep for angling at me. You don't have to be closer to this. You just okay. talk to the mic. All right, so. Is this real? This is just a stick. Yeah, it can be real. It can be whatever you want it to be. Okay. <laughs> All right, poutine 2 a.m. story. Go. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I was on an overnight. Yeah, flight. In Halifax, yeah, yeah. Uh, with a bunch of flight attendants and pilots. We went out partying because we had a really long layover. Yeah, uh, The layover was like 32 hours in Halifax or something. So we went out partying. It wasn't 2 a.m., it was 4 a.m. Uh, we're standing in line up at this, like, you know, like the, like the w outside windows yeah. where they just, like, hand you stuff? You One of those kinds yeah, of places, yeah. okay? This is in Halifax on the east coast of Canada. And so we're standing in line for poutine, and then as we're in line up... I feel somebody pinch my butt oh, yeah. and I turn around and there's this dude just fucking looking at me in the face like what like what's my problem and I'm like are you fucking I'm like bro what the fuck right <laughs> and he just goes Ugh. and I'm like what the fuck and I don't know what it was like I had had a bit to drink you know what I mean I don't know if it was like because I was embarrassed in front of my colleagues or what it was I've never done this before I literally because he just didn't respond to me I lifted my hand and I slapped him. Nice. And Will I Smith felt like, style? Huh? Will Smith style? Not Will Smith style. Like, 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 remember, uh, remember uh, Home Alone? Yeah. Uh, we're telling stories. Yeah, Home Alone. 
Maybe the fire truck. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know how how she like smacks him in the face like that. I think that's probably why it happened because I felt that kind of like deja vu moment. So what did he pinch your bum for? So check this. So as soon as I slap him, one of the flight attendants, he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. That was me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That was me. I was playing a trick on you. I had no idea this is how you'd react. And I'm like, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me right now? Did you buy him some poutine? Said we did, but wait for it. Okay. So I turned to the guy that I slapped. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I, I had no idea that they were, I thought you pinched my ass. Like I, I, I just, and then he, Again, goes. He was deaf. Oh. oh my God. <laughs> the reason he didn't respond to me when I was yelling at him <laughs> is because he couldn't hear what I was asking, and he was going, "Uh," and I thought he was like making gang symbols at me and shit. He was trying to speak to me in sign. Oh. I didn't see any of that. I fucking slept. <laughs> you slept the deaf guy. I in Halifax, bro. Anyways, we bought him and all his buddies poutine. They thought it was hilarious. They had a good laugh. But then the next day, now we're working, and this fucking flight attendant working with him, and we're doing the. And I'm like, can I get you some coffee? And he's like, better hurry up and answer her before she slaps you. And I'm like, fucking, <laughs> like the entire. They just kept razzing the entire uh, time. I, I had this like reputation of like, I love it. Aaliyah's got a quick hand, you know, and just fucking. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That is that is pretty uh, good. Uh, 4 a.m. Worthwhile extended answer. Story. All right. <laughs> Now, for the final part, we're going to do quick fire. So, okay, let's go. So just give me an answer. Yeah. No no uh, rambling. Mm. Uh, time you almost literally pissed yourself. I've come close a couple of times in my sleep. I'm not going to lie. I'm super <laughs> lazy. I get lazy and I don't want to get out of bed. And then I'm like, just go. And then I like almost start dreaming about peeing. And then I'm like, oh, no. And then I'll like race out. Okay. So that's the moment. That's gross. Yeah. Um, cliche, <laughs> cliche female comic topics that need to be archived. So like they're retired. The, the, let's talk. Don't make fun of vaginas. I'm not making fun of vaginas. But I'm saying that needs to be our guy. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Okay. You know? Favorite hockey team. You're Canadian. Ice hockey, obviously. Go. Uh, I don't even know if I know the name of a hockey team. <laughs> I'm such a bad Canadian. The Toronto? Maple Leafs. There we go. There we go. <laughs> cool. The Ottawa? Raptors. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. Favorite U.S. city? Uh... I really love New York. Yeah, I love New Chicago York. Chicago too. Though. Oh yes, that's you know my, what I mean. Those are my two. Right? And San Fran too. I haven't been to San Fran yet. Believe it or not, I, I like have not it. been. I like it. Yeah, it smells I'm like sure piss, I like it. But when you go out, out, outskirts, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, favorite thing about Perth? Uh, it feels kind of small towny. Okay. Yeah, people are really nice, right? Like, I just I like it. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Favorite movie of all time. I hate this game. I don't like it's picking favorites. It's not a game. It's serious. It's the red mic. I don't like picking favorites of anything. It's too much commitment. What if I change my mind? Then that's all right. You're evolving. Favorite, Favorite comedian of all time? Surely it's Jim Carrey because you're Canadian. No, I really like Dave Chappelle. Yeah, he's up there too. You know. Yeah. Did you ever watch his uh, shows back in the day? You know, I didn't really. I didn't have a TV for a lot of that stuff, so I didn't. I didn't watch a lot of um, stuff oh, growing man. up. Watch but some yeah, of the classic I know. stuff. I watch it now though, and some of it I'm like, oh, Dave. Clayton, Clayton Bigsby. Oh, Dave. Clayton Bigsby. Oh yes, 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 yes. I have a sketch that I wrote that's kind of similar to that actually. I. That 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 so that's my it's favorite genius. sketch of all time. It's um, genius. Shittest one star review experience of me? No 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 like 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 what's made you go? I need to fucking put a one star review on Google of this. This is that bad. I don't like you know. You, no one ever bothers to do one star reviews unless they're that bad. You need to make it known. Have you had that one? Surely. I mean, honestly, like I like to let go of bad experiences very quickly. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but I did once go to a restaurant in Peru uh, where it was supposed to be like my fancy birthday dinner. And it was like a five stars, like 5,000 reviews saying how amazing this place was. So we went there for, for dinner. And the food was like, like the potatoes were not cooked all the way through. Everything was over salted. The, the meat was cold. Like it was just like... All the stuff was wrong. Okay, good. 
Um, uh. All right, that yeah. was quite disappointing. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And finally, what is the one... Oh, and this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Clap back, I like it. Okay, I'm starting acting and comedy. What's your pro tip? Um, your one pro tip. Risk it all, bro. Risk it all. Just be willing to risk it all. Honestly, be willing to risk it all. Be willing to look like a fool. Be willing to give up your lifestyle. Be willing to, to take chances on yourself. Be willing to... Risk it all. Risk mm -hmm. it all. You know what I mean? Because there's so many super talented people out there that are going to be willing to risk it all. And that's really, I think, that what, what you, you know, we talk about investing in yourself. That is the biggest investment. Very true. Risk it. Very true. Yeah. Invest in yourself. Take, take those chances. Invest in yourself. Believe in yourself. The biggest risk in life is on yourself. And people don't want to do it. But you have all of the control and the one thing that's certain is no matter what you do, no matter what you risk throughout your life, you're not going to get out alive. Yes. So might as well give yeah. it a try. Give it a crack. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank How you. do we go and see your shows? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be well, – I don't know when this clip is going to come out. but I'm I don't know either. Probably in, next year. Oh, well, <laughs> then you know what? You won't be able to afford me by then, motherfuckers. <laughs> No, I, uh, I, I'm gonna be at the the Fringe Festival um, for for What's your show Fringe. Called? I've got two shows I'm doing. So my solo show, uh, which is a new one, uh, which I'm really excited about, um, is called uh, Aliyah Kanani is a work in progress, uh, and I'm talking about um, just trying to find balance in life, which is something I've always really struggled with. Um, you know, I went to an ashram in India to try and learn how to take care of myself after my body started falling apart in the middle of a festival in Edinburgh where I was in the hospital. It was like a whole thing because I just don't know how to take care of myself properly sometimes. Jeez. And so, like, I talk about how I'm yeah. trying to balance, like, yoga and, uh, yoga and wine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and then, then the other my show? other show, it's called uh, All That She Wants. And I'm uh, uh, co hosting that one with Jill uh, Cordner, who's oh, hilarious. Oh, she's been on the show. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love I love Jill. Shout out to Jill. Um, yeah, yeah. I actually, so I co hosted that show in Toronto with uh, Amanda Seafried, which was insane. I was working with her on a film. I told her I was doing this show. She said she wanted to be part of it. Mm. And then one thing led to another. She co hosted it with me, and we yeah. had so much fun. That we've made this into this new new format. We're co-hosting an all-female lineup show, and it's like all like jokes, sexy secrets, and life hacks. It's gonna be like a party. Yeah. So yeah. Actually, actually, fun. I'm gonna get Jill on the phone now. Oh my god, stop! This I'm is, supposed to meet her just now. This is a uh, this is a uh, it, like a skit. Oh, so okay. so I'm just gonna get her on the phone. Oh, hey Dialed Jill. Two hey Jill, we got Alia on the phone. You what? You're constipated. All right, we'll talk to Alia about it. Hey. Yeah, no, I know. I'm sorry I brought up your name. I know that you're really mad at him from the last interview you guys did here. This is super embarrassing. I'm so sorry. Yeah, he is a bit of a dick. No, you're right. No, he kept on trying to talk about how women aren't fun. You know, just classic male ego shit. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, anyways, I'll catch up with you later. Ask her about her constipation. Oh, how's the constipation going? Oh, yeah, I can give you a hand with that. Yeah, no, I got, I got a plunger in the back of my car. I'll be over really soon. Yeah, okay, got you. Yo, listen. What are, what are, what are, what are lady friends for, am I right? <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get the big spoon, okay? <laughs> right, very good, very good. All right, well, we've got the red mic, the red phone, the red bottle. Yo, and, listen, uh, I'm gonna, I wanted to say something that I thought about as I was answering those questions, but I, I was the whole rapid fire thing. Just on, on a note uh, of what you were saying real yeah. quick. I read something recently when you're making a vision board, which yeah. I've still never made, but yeah. it was the things that you uh, are doing, the things that you want to be doing, and the most important thing, which is apparently what people always forget and leave out, is who you want to be. Mm. And I think that kind of really ties in really well with your self-awareness, mm. because it's not just I don't think about evaluating who you are, how you are, how you affect others. But who is it? What is the version of that person you want to be, and what is going to enable you to get there? I love that. Anyways, I just I thought I. I love that. And throw that uh, in for your. Thank you for everybody for listening to the show. If you have any questions, leave your comments in the YouTube thing. Leave your reviews in the Spotify or the iTunes thing. You know my outros are pretty shit still, but if you leave a five star review, that'd be great. If you don't, then 
fuck you. And uh, <laughs> everything you need to know about this woman is in the description. Uh, follow her on Instagram and go see her friend show. And when she comes back, if she comes back. I'll be back. Yeah. All right. And as always, good thanks. See you later. <laughs>